Mr Deputy President, I lead for the Labor opposition in this place on the Court's Legislation Amendment Disrespectful Behaviour Bill. Uh, the Labor opposition won't oppose the bill, but we regard the bill as a second-rate stunt that will have no practical impact other than to fill up the statute book. Um, the object of the bill is to make it a summary offence to engage in behaviour that is disrespectful according to practice and convention in a number of jurisdictions. So specifically those jurisdictions are the Supreme Court, the Land and Environment Court, District Court, Local Court and Coronial Proceedings. The summary offence will have a maximum penalty of 14 days imprisonment or 10 penalty units currently $550 or both. To breach the proposed provision, the person must be an accused or defendant or party to proceedings of the court will call to give evidence in relation to coronial proceedings. It extends to someone appearing in or being represented in coronial proceedings or has been called to give evidence. The offending behaviour must be intentional and must have occurred during the proceedings. It doesn't have, they don't have to have intended to have been disrespectful, but they must intend to do the actions or the behaviours that are found to have been um, disrespectful. The behaviour that is criminalised is behaviour that is disrespectful to the proceedings or presiding official according to established practice and convention. Um, there are a number of provisions which would normally be regarded as restrictive and as a means to limit the too frequent use of the offence. Proceedings must be brought only by a person or a member of a class of persons authorised in writing by the Secretary of the Department of Justice. Proceedings will only be able to be commenced with the authorisation of the Attorney General. There are also evidentiary provisions about transcript or audio or video recordings of the proceedings concerned because judicial officers cannot be required to give evidence uh, in proceedings. The bill also says it does not affect any power with respect to contempt. It provides that the person can be, can't be prosecuted for both this offence and contempt for the same behaviour, which um, at least avoids the, uh, the double jeopardy point. Uh, in, anal in analysing uh, the legislation, um, it's clear that disrespectful behaviour according to established court practice and convention is extraordinarily wide. It should, of course, be uh, a basic principle of the criminal law that its provisions should be clear, and this bill is not. Um, if the government really wants to criminalise behaviour of persons who don't stand up in court, then they should simply do so simply and directly rather than uh, through this overly wide provision. Of course, uh, if they're satisfied that there aren't other ways of dealing with the problem. The, the maximum penalty provided is quite ridiculous. Um, it seems reasonably obvious that the offence would it be aimed at persons charged in the main with terrorism offences, and they are by very definition serious offences with serious penalties, an extra 14 days uh, for persons facing these charges would be fairly meaningless and would have no real impact. And the provision uh, in relation to the in requiring the attorney's consent is very strange indeed. Um, there's no evidence that um, uh, that this legislation is really needed, uh, it, and it all seems to stem from a particular uh, incident in the district court. Um, uh, that occurred in about November 2015. Um, now, we've seen it reported in the media um, that the matter was referred to the Attorney General by the judge concerned. Uh, and I understand in that case the Attorney sought and received the advice of the Solicitor General. Uh, I assume the, attorney, the Solicitor General found there was no contempt to prosecute, not that the government's released any evidence and it's not. But I would ask the Parliamentary Secretary in reply to just confirm those matters. Um, um, the Government proceeds uh, in this legislation by arguing that the current laws are not adequate. Um, and apart from that <laughs> one, one example that I've referred to, my, from my understanding, it's quite clear that judicial officers, whether magistrates or judges, have proven quite adequate within uh, the inherent powers of courts to control their own proceedings, to deal with uh, challenges to the authority of the courts um, and to the judges. 
uh, that falls short of contempt. Um, apart from being dealt with for contempt where it reaches that level, uh, persons can be removed from courtrooms. Uh, in the case of defendants behaving inappropriately, uh, they can be held in the cells until they behave themselves. Um, and of course, clearly the attitude of defendants can be considered by courts in the context of contrition and sentencing. It doesn't take a lot of research to realise the practical implications of this legislation will be extremely limited. Um, the fact is that the courts of this state uh, have proven uh, to have the resources and the skills and the temperaments to be able to deal uh, with these matters sensibly and without too much fanfare. Um, um, I also like the Parliamentary Secretary to confirm that it's the Attorney's uh, intention to delegate to the Solicitor General the Attorney's role uh, in this matter. Um, um, that at least would give, I think, a little bit more comfort um, uh, for people to know that there would be a proper, uh, a proper and considered approach to whether or not to prosecute for this offence uh, if it ever gets to that level. Uh, as I said, the opposition regards these measures as not necessary and of extremely limited practical effect, uh, but we won't oppose if the government uh, intends to proceed, but time will show that its only real effect is to just clutter up the statute books. <coughs> okay.